Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell highlights major achievements of his government in its first 100 days in office. Details of this story and more in the National Report. Have you noticed an increase or decrease in your electricity bill? You know that changes in the fuel and non-fuel rates affect your bill. You should also be aware that changes in household activities affect your bill. Ask yourself these questions. Have the rates changed? Have there been more people at your home? Have your children been on holiday? Have you used your fan or air conditioning unit more often to beat the heat? Are any of your electrical appliances or equipment faulty? Have you added any new appliances such as transformers, water heaters, or pumps? Make it a habit to understand any changes on your electricity bill. For more factors that affect your bill, visit www.grenlick.com. Grenlick, energizing our Grenada. Welcome back. With the details of the news on Monday, October 3rd, 2022, I am Sherry and Noel. Restructuring the COVID-19 Stimulus Package 2.0 to focus on small business development, civil aviation agreements to support airlift, government's implementation of measures to simplify the immigration process at ports of entry, and plans for the rollout of twice-monthly payment of salaries to be delivered by the first quarter of 2023. These are some of the achievements outlined by Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell as he reflected on his administration's 100 days in office. In an address to mark the occasion, Prime Minister Mitchell said his government's transformational agenda is definitely not a pie in the sky, but one that is hinged on shared vision for a sustainable, equitable, and prosperous Grenada. He spoke of other notable achievements 100 days after their inauguration. The removal of school fees at pre-primary, primary, and secondary levels. My government views education as a fundamental right and the foundation of a prosperous nation. Under this administration, no child will be denied an education due to payment of school fees. In addition, second chance opportunities will be afforded to all youth who did not complete a primary, secondary, or tertiary education. Two, payment of doc salaries to teachers and other public officers. Teachers play a critical role in the development of a knowledgeable and prosperous society and often go above and beyond the call of duty to ensure the well-being of the nation's children. While this was not a campaign promise, my government made it a priority to repay the $1.2 million in dock salaries from 2018 that affected 1,000 721 public servants. PM Mitchell says if his administration is to create a just society, they must lead by example. Government will honor the Constitution and the ruling of the High Court on the payment of pensions to the public servants. Plans to this end are well underway. The House of Representatives sat 29 September 2020 and passed the Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2022 to facilitate, in part, the authorization of the $60 million required to pay the retroactive pension payment, which will be paid by November 30th, 2022. Cost of living relief measures. On the recommendation of the Ministry of Finance, Government approved the rollout of new cost of living relief measures, as well as the revision of existing ones to mitigate the impact of high cost of living in a fiscally sustainable manner. The government's new fiscal policy measures include 1. Petroleum products. The removal of the $15 cap and the reduction in the petrol tax on gasoline and diesel from $5.50 to zero dollars, effective September 18, 2022, for the next four price changes. As of 18 September, 
citizens are paying as much as $2.26 less on gasoline and 43 cents less on diesel at the pump. Moving along, the Ministries of Social Development and Health and Wellness are the latest to benefit from the goodwill gesture of Spice and We Inc., a non-profit organization based in New York. Through fundraisers and donations from Grenadians in the diaspora and other regional friends, the group presented items to Honorable Philip Telesford, Senator Gloria Thomas, and Senator Gaetan Lackrat on Monday. President of the group, Ray Gay, made the trip to Grenada to make the presentation and reaffirmed the group's motto of We Lift Each Other to Rise Together. He stressed that the objective of the group is to touch the lives of the vulnerable community. We came up with this group because we love helping people. And today, this small contribution, I know it's going to go a long way because it's going to be continuous. Um, as Sherry Ann say, I'm not medically intelligent like maybe some of you guys, but <clears throat> we have stuff for the hospital. We have stuff for the um, elderly. So I just hope we could continue doing what we're doing. Honorable Philip Tellisford is grateful for the donation. More than 250 adult pampers and bed padding are handed over to the ministry. These items are items that are generally in high demand by our senior citizens because, of course, over a period of time, they are affected um, by some of the uh, diseases that affect our senior citizens. And as a consequence, they rely heavily on these medical supplies. These supplies, I'm sure, um, will go a very long way in assisting both at the residential home level as well as the general hospital. Senator the Honorable Gloria Thomas expressed gratitude on behalf of the desk of the elderly for what she considers as a timely gesture. I want to take this opportunity to thank Spice and we for such a contribution to the ministry and to the elderly in our society. We know that the elderly has played the part in the development of this country, and at this point in time in their life, it is our duty to look after them and to ensure that their needs are properly taken care of. I think this humanitarian gesture is one that is highly applauded because after one would have given a number of years and a number of service to the country, oftentimes they are forgotten. But groups like Spice and We and other non-governmental organizations saw it best to come forward and to make their contribution. Senator the Honorable Gaten Lackert says his government encourages a public-private partnership in moving the transformation agenda forward. On behalf of the Ministry of Health, on behalf of our government, we want to thank you very much for this private-public partnership. It's private-public partnerships like these our government embrace, and as a result of that, we hope that we can continue working together. So we want to also thank you for the medical gifts, and um, you, we, you will indeed continue to hear from us from time to time as we, <laughs> as we continue this private-public partnership relationship. So thank you very much for seeing the need um, for this contribution and donation to our elderly here in Grenada. Spice and We Inc. has also embarked on a food and toy drive for vulnerable families for the upcoming holiday season. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Prepare for hurricane. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do kin stuff, garbage bag, birthday kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair prepare for hurricane. Understanding the importance of backyard gardens, which contribute to household food security and nutrition by providing direct access to diverse foods, the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture, ICA, is continuing to provide technical assistance to members of the Backyard Gardens Network Initiative. 
The latest initiative, Educating Backyard Gardeners, that are part of this network, is a hands-on theoretical and practical exercise which demonstrated the best practices for the development of compost. Members of the network, June Charles and Lauren Rizan, say for women, this means that the gardening practices are more climate-friendly and they have healthier foods on their plates. We have to use what nature provides. And this demonstration this morning is of utmost importance so that I can continue in my backyard farming. I even do flowers too. I get, and I eat what I grow because it's good for my health. It keeps down diabetes, hypertension, and so forth. So I think this initiative is very good and it should be throughout the country because if everybody have a little backyard gardening, they know how to do their composting and so, it will help in their food bill. The food bill will not be that high and their health will soar. So this, this exercise is of utmost importance. I try to grow as much of my greens as possible, veggies and so. So yes, if I know I have something that could um, enrich the soil, something that is natural, something that is high, has high nutrients value in itself, I'm going to use it, you know, ex ex extremely as much as possible because it it, it will contribute to the output, the amount of um, crops that I get, as well as the value of the crops itself, you know, just for my own nutritional value. This exercise assists in creation of economic opportunities through the adoption of bioeconomic models, such as the incorporation of composting, which converts waste into resource. Derek Charles, National Specialist at ECA, speaking on the objective of the training, says the idea is to give the backyard gardeners as much knowledge as possible so that they can turn into viable projects. We're on the Cardi field station. It's a collaborative effort between ECA and Cardi to construct a composting site with a number of composting bins uh, where we'll be capable of training farmers and extension officers on the science of composting. Composting is an essential element in the backyard. In addition to that, uh, we expect um, the backyard gardeners to have some level of rainwater harvesting. They will have the, the, um, the essential garden, which is the vegetable garden. Uh, they will have the herbs and most likely they will have some probably small ruminant or rabbit, uh, as the case may be, or even poultry, to provide some level of nitrogen um, in the composting. Because Other members of the network, Kelvin Thompson and Nicole Sutherland, are hopeful that acquiring this skill will contribute to improved operations in their gardens. Composting is very important to me because we're using what nature gave us, the leaves, the plants, I mean the grass, which we consider weeds. We could use that to nourish the plants and to put back into the soil what it's giving us. It will help alleviate the cost of, you know, uh, having what we need for our farms in the first instance. And um, secondly, well, it's using, it's using um, things that come from the garden itself while you're getting it ready to plant your produce. So it's sort of a cycle where you use the stuff that you would take out of your garden, like the weeds and such, and put it back into the garden so that it provides nurturing and you know, nutrients for your plants. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture, ECA, officially launched the first Backyard Gardeners Network initiative in Grenada last year in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture. The Lions Club of St. John is observing its fourth year of existence this month. On Sunday, the group gathered at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School to reflect on its achievements, accomplishments, and the positive impact on the lives of residents throughout the St. John community. President of the club, Brent McSween, says since its inception, the club, which is based in St. John has worked diligently to live up to the mantra of Lions Club International's motto, We Serve. Our club was founded on October the 6th, 2018. We are now stepping into the fourth year of Lionistic service. It is also a very special year for us. We are no longer toddlers and we remain one of the most respected organization in our community. Lions Club of St. John has a proud tradition of excellence and leadership in Zone 3C and by extension, 
sub-district 60B. In the club's four years of existence, he says they have copped many awards. During our four years, as a team, the Lions Club of St. John has devoted ourselves to community and humanitarian service, supporting charities and promoting goodwill through a variety of fundraising activities and service projects. As Lions, we are known for our acts of kindness. We have championed and continue to champion the kindness in our communities and actively work to improve the lives of all people. Jeremiah Heisen, member of the Lions Club of St. George's, has served as a mentor for the St. John Lions Club and he too is very pleased with the achievements. In four years is a short time, but within that short time, I think you all have done a lot of work. In fact, you all was... In fact, you all was, was awarded the most outstanding club in the zone. And at one time, I knew that you all was the largest club on the island. And I think um, this is a great achievement. So I know the problem with clubs and, um, and personality clashes and so on. But I think you all have done great to survive and reach um, this far. So I'm really looking forward to the, um, to the great plans that you all have for 2022 and 2023, and I pray God that you all um, achieve as, as much as you all um, could achieve. The Lions Club of St. John provides services to the visual impaired, people living with diabetes, and also takes care of the nutritional needs of the most vulnerable in society. And with that story, we come to the end of the National Report for Monday, October 3rd, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sherry Ann Noel, thanking you for viewing.